All right. The oven is in. And uh, to be honest, uh, that was a lot easier than I had anticipated it being. Um, this is the uh, Premio 2G100. Um, so it has the three inch thick uh, dome instead of the two inch as the Casa does. And uh, I just envisioned this being a lot uh, worse than it was, but myself and uh, my brother-in-law was able to take care of it uh, with assistance of my wife pretty pretty easily, honestly. I think the tractor um, and the pallet uh, is really what uh, made it all happen. That made it easy to get the pieces up onto the platform and then it was just kind of moving them and putting them in place from there. So easy peasy. Um, so now, um, you know, we got all the gaps, I think, where they need to be. Uh, we got about a quarter inch gap, you know, kind of all the way around. Gapping to me looks pretty good. Uh, Keystone is in place. That looks good. Uh, floor didn't, didn't move around a whole lot. Um, looks pretty good. And there's the inside, but yeah. So, all right. Uh, so all so really, that's it went smoothly. And so now we need to go to the next step, which is to get the uh, Saraset high temp mortar on these seams. Um, and what we don't want to do is we don't want to push the mortar far into these seams. We kind of just want to lay it on top and have a three inch three inch wide, about three quarter inch band across all of these seams and across around the keystone at the top as well. And if there's any deviations in the cast, like down here, I'll probably fill this in and up the top, you can see there's a pretty big void or something happened, either removing it from the mold or, or whatever there. I'll put some extra there to fill all that in as we go. But so, um, Here's the bucket of Saraset that they uh, include in your kit. And when I opened this kit, um, all the water had risen, all the liquid had been kind of separated to the top. And so it's quite liquidy. The, um, the bottom part of the, the mortar was hard. And so I used my mixer for five or so minutes to mix this up. And I think I got it mixed up. Uh, pretty good but it is it's still real thick um, I'm not sure I'm gonna give it a go like this and see how it does but it is really thick and I'm not sure if you're supposed to add water to it um, or not uh, to make it more workable but I've never used this stuff before so a little bit of a noob but I'm gonna give it a go as it is um, and start covering these seams and see how it goes I'll bring it back uh, when I'm finished all right, so um, so also, also as you can see, got the canopy up. Uh, it's a little bit warm, 80 degrees, probably sunny. So I put the canopy up to give the oven some shade. And so I have now put the Saraset tub on the oven that they give you. I ended up using all of it uh, for this particular application. And so I'm not sure, it didn't seem like I put it on heavy, so um just be aware you do use just about all of it um and uh one thing i am noticing so i've seen pictures online before of this product and when it was done and dried it was cracked uh, a lot of surface cracks and so um i'm shading it to try to prevent it from drying too soon i did not add any additional water to the bucket i just mixed what was ever there so there's no additional water added just mixed as it came um, and I'm seeing I'm starting to see not sure if you can see this on the videos um, but I'm starting to see just a little bit of cracking forming as the outside shell is drying um, and so not sure what that means we'll see we'll let her go um, and go ahead and cure all the way but if I see a lot of cracking, um, I'm going to mix up. I have a bag of uh, refractory mortar 
Um, and if I see a lot of cracking, I'm going to skim coat it. Uh, probably fill in all the cracks with that um, refractory mortar just to make sure it has a good seal. Um, I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking if if this isn't sealed well, uh, smoke could get out these joints. And so I don't want smoke to get into the insulation. Probably not the end of the world, but just rather not have it happen. So um, we'll see. We'll let it cure. I'll bring you back in 12 hours to see what it looks like. Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, a number of days have passed since the, the last uh, segment and a few things have changed. And so last time uh, I was showing you, I was putting on the Saraset mortar that came with the kit uh, to cover up the seams, the joints. And I've heard horror stories about it cracking on people uh, but I put a can of shade canopy up, I covered it with plastic for two days, but lo and behold, it cracked horribly. Um, and I got, took a couple pictures, so I'll try and put those up now. Um, but it was, it was bad. I had just eighth inch cracks running all through it. Um, and that's with putting a canopy up, covering it in plastic so the water didn't evap out. Um, the only thing I didn't do is about 78 degree morning, 80 degree morning uh, when I put it on. I did not spray the pizza oven down to get it wet first, um, but it was severe cracking. And so I can't even believe that that, uh, you know, misting the surface would have prevented cracking. Um, I've heard horror stories. I was hoping it wasn't true, but for me it was. So what I had to do was scrape off the entire um, mortar off of the pizza oven. I had to go around with uh, my pry bar and scrape off all of the mortar uh, that um, I had put on, all that cracked mortar. Um, luckily enough, it did not seem like it adhered well uh, and the pry bar was able to pop it off, you know, in about 15 minutes of work and I was done cleaned it up, um, got all the grout, or scrout, I got all the mortar out of any of the seams that may have got in there, and I used a different product. And so this product is a high heat refractory mortar. Uh, this particular product is from Menards. It's medium duty, up to 2,500 degrees, and this thing is, it's hard. Uh, it's been curing now for a couple days, and no cracks. So I I don't know, my advice, if you're doing an outside pizza oven when it's slightly warm or slightly windy or not ideal conditions, you may think about just getting a good refractory mortar and just setting that Saraset stuff aside. I wish I would have, it would have saved me a lot of work. So lesson numero uno uh, on the pizza oven. So a couple other things to keep in mind as you're doing this that I wish I would have known or they would have mentioned in the instructions and there's a lot of little tips I feel like they could give in the instructions and they don't uh, give any. Um, so a couple things. One, uh, when you put these pieces together, they're going to want to naturally kind of tip in uh, because there's not a lot of support. So you're going to support them with wood. But one thing you can do is measure or put a level um, on this front piece and make sure your front piece is, is vertical. That way, when you stack the rest, they're all going to be um, plumb as well. Uh, what I noticed was I had a, a fatter crack at the bottom, and as it got to the top, the crack thinned or got more narrow. Um, and that was because all the pieces were slightly laying in. And so if you have a tighter um, seam, a gap at the top than at the bottom, most likely your whole oven is kind of leaning into the middle, um, which probably isn't a terribly big deal, but um, just something to check. Uh, mine is actually leaning in just ever so slightly, um, but again, not a big deal. Not gonna worry about it. Um, also, um, on putting the mortar on, you're not supposed to get any mortar in the seams themselves and the gaps, which is extremely hard. Um, you're supposed to cover them with an inch, but not get any in the cracks, which is, again, difficult. So what I ended up doing um, was trying to get some, I don't have my, uh, trial here but if this was my trial I would get some mortar on the side of it and I would bring it up and I would 
squeeze and kind of push it to the side and the mortar would go kind of like right along the joint i would do the other side and then i would lightly kind of uh, smear them together and that seemed to get the grout or the mortar on without filling in the joint um but it is tricky uh, and i guarantee you i have some mortar in some of the joints i, I just don't know how you would prevent it um so another lesson learned um so one my top is not perfectly poured if you look here you can see it's just it's just uneven um which makes putting on the chimney adapter very very difficult and then on top of that my chimney adapter which i'm using super vent had a adapter piece that was attached to the bottom that was about yay long that was actually eight inches so it was made to have a pipe go inside it well that didn't work because this particular hole is exactly eight inches this was for an eight inch outside pipe so this adapter would not easily go in this hole um, so what i had to do is as you can see is cut the majority of that bottom part of the adapter off so that way when i put this on you know it'll fit in that hole now and uh, not get caught so just be aware of your adapter what you want to do is find an adapter that is crimped that is meant to go inside the pipe uh, not going to the outside so this works i emailed forno bravo that's what they recommended just cut it so that's what i did easy peasy um, but again if you get the right adapter you can save yourself that, that trouble all right so that leads me to the next step um, I'm going to go ahead and get the top uh, anchor plate on for the chimney so we can get that done and mortared. So what I'm using is the same refactory mortar. But uh, so I plan to put a bead of it all the way around. Um, and of course, it's not level. So I'm going to use some stainless washers under it. Uh, to get it level and I've already put it on and know how many washers I need in each area. So um, uh, But yeah, so I'm going to use washers to help get it level so I can screw it tight I'm going to put a bead of mortar all the way around a um, little bit probably on the uh, softer side liquid side uh, Make it flow. So when I tighten it down it squeezes um, and fills in any gaps um, Then what we're going to do is get the chimney pipe hook it up and then we're going to put a one inch layer of mortar all the way around the top of the anchor plate up to the pipe connection just so no smoke or anything can get outside out of this uh, and leak into the cabinet so that's next as you can see i've already marked and drilled my holes we're good to go there use the bosch hammer drill worked great a uh, little bit of uh puckering on drilling this I could just you can see there's a couple corners that it came to already um, broken um, so I could just see you know me drilling this and my luck that the whole corner just splinters out uh, but it didn't we gooch so let's go ahead and get the mortar mixed up uh, and get the anchor plate on all right so now I'm gonna put the level on here as I do these next two to make sure that uh, it ends up nice and level. Okay. All right, one more. Snug this one up. That's good that way. Good that way. All right. 
right. We are pretty good all the way around. So I snug that up. Now we're just going to clean up the joints. Okay, and I'm using a super vent, double wall, eight inch. So let's put it in, twist, and there you have it. Now we're just going to put a layer all the way around here, cover it all up. So, stuff is done. Uh, got a nice layer of mortar all around the pipe. Smooth it out. That's easy peasy. All right, so we're just going to let this all cure. Uh, and then we get started on the insulation. And so that'll be in the next video, show you how I do that. So, uh, if you're planning on putting one of these kits together, one, make sure you have plenty of help. They're heavy. Two, uh, take your time, lay everything out, measure, mark everything, make your life easier. Uh, check your levels when you're putting the pieces together to make sure your pieces aren't tipping. Uh, and up to you, I wouldn't use the Saraset. I would use something uh, different, like I did. It's working much better. So good luck on your build, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.